all right good evening guys and welcome to a fourth video tutorial on python programming um in the last video that we produced we discussed about modules uh built-in functions and functions in python and as well as your user defined functions um just before we ended the video the last video we we're trying to discuss about memory concepts in python to see how Python handles variables and values that it's being given in the course of writing a Python script or Python codes. Now, we did discuss or mention that Python has what we call memories, which it allocates variables or values that are being fed into it. Now, for those of you who have the material that I distributed and I'm making use of the material in your studies, there's a topic there that is known as memory concepts. Memory concepts. Now, these are this topic was trying to describe the locations, the various locations in which Python stores some of the values of variables that are included in it. So, if for instance I write a variable like this, a is equals to five. So. If we write something like this, the value of a is equals to 5, what this statement means is that variable a has been given a value of 5, and the value of 5, which is variable a, has been stored in a particular memory location in Python. So that the next time I probably want to do um, variable h is equals to variable a plus 2, in this case, Python is going to not get value of variable h. Python is going to go to this memory location where a has been created and given a value of 5, get the value of the variable a, and then add it with the value of 3 to get the new variable value for variable h. So likewise, variable h, the location is going to be created in memory, and the value of this mathematical computation will be assigned to the variable h. So in Python, the way in which you go about finding the memory location of a particular variable is with the keyword ID. If most of you who were able to follow the video tutorials that we did, the last one, we did mention about built-in functions, how you can find them. And if you remember the process in which to do, to go about that, go into your idle GUI. That's the one that came along with the Python installation. If you go there and then type in the directory built-ins and then enter, you will find a list of all the, these are all the built-in functions that come with your Python application. And just for emphasis, this is the, this is the method that we're talking about and that we're looking about the ID, the ID function. So that's the function that gives you an idea of the memory location in which Python is serving a particular variable. So if I were to print ID of A, if I run this program, it's going to show me that this is the memory location where this value of 5, which is the value of variable A, has been created. So this is the memory location for variable A. So in this computation, in order to get the value of h, Python is going to go to this memory location to get the value of variable a and then add that to 3 and in order to get that. So, so if you want to find out, you can also do that and then find the id of variable h. Uh, let's just hope Python is going to run this based on this being, you know, it may not allow, okay, it has. So you can see that Python has given variable a a particular, I mean, uh, variable a, a particular memory in this location. This is the location of the memory, and variable h, after being uh, mathematically calculated, has also been given a memory location in Python. So with this, you are able to know the various locations. And if you want to know the kind of variable that a particular, what type of variable a particular variable might be. You do that using type function, okay? This is also one of the built-in functions that come provided with Python. So if I type type of A, and if I print that, and if I run this, Python is gonna give me the type of variable that this particular variable A is. And you can see in this case, variable A 
has a type of integer. It's an, it's an integer type of variable. So the same thing applies for strings, same thing applies for objects, whatever the type is. All you need to do is write in the type function and then type in the type the variable and Python will give you the type of variable that is so that you know if you wanted to make a comparison or a form of casting, you'd know which to use and which not to use. Alright, so that's that for that. Now we're gonna look at something else that is very interesting that we haven't looked into that we need to look into. Yeah, we're talking about using lines. So this time around, we want to look at various operators in Python. Okay, we want to look at the various operators that Python makes use of in different activities. And the first one we want to start with is the arithmetic oper operator. Arithmetic operators. Okay. Now, as the name implies, these are operators that you could use in mathematical equations or mathematical, you know, expressions in order to get. Uh, to arrive at the value that you're going to assign to a variable. So what are some of these arithmetic operators? There are many of them. Okay, there are about six of them. This is for the addition. That's the addition um, sign in Python. This is a subtraction sign. For most of you who are already familiar with many other programming languages, you're already aware of this. This is the multiplication sign. That's a multiplication operator. This is the division operator. Okay, this is the that's the f um, maybe I must have mentioned this. I think I must have mentioned this in the previous video I had created that Python has two different types of divisions. There is the floor division, which would just round up the value and throw away the decimal places, and there is the true division, which will give you the decimal places as long side to the round, you know, round figure. Okay. And um, is that it? Okay, yeah, there is one other operator as you name. This is the modulus operator. Modulus. Yeah, what this guy does, uh, modulus. What this guy does is to find the remainder of a particular variable, um, a, a particular division. So while this guy gives you the the um, whole number, this guy gives you the remaining, the remainder, whatever remains from that division. So these are the six different mathematical operators that are used in Python. And as we mentioned, mathematical operators are there to provide values to variables. So I can say a is equals to 4 plus 6. So in this case now, I've used the mathematical operator addition to give a value of 10 to variable a. Same also applies with every other mathematical operations that you want to use. You can make use of them to assign a value to a particular variable. So that's that for mathematical operators. So um, take note, mathematical operators or arithmetic operators, like any of the six ones that we mentioned, are used to create values that you can assign to new variables or even an existing variable. Because these minute detail they are very important they make a whole lot of difference mathematical operators or arithmetic operators are used to assign variables to either an existing variable or a new variable in this case a is a new variable because it was never declared anywhere else but in the case of an existing variable I can now say a, a at first is already having a value of 6 but I can now say a should be equals to 4 plus 5 in this case, A will now have a new value of 9 and neglecting the first value of 6. So, in this case, the mathematical operator has been used to assign a value to an already existing variable. Alright, now let's look at the second type of operator. This time around, we call them the assignment operator. Okay, this is the assignment operator. Now, this is a bit similar to the arithmetic operator in the sense that it makes use of some of some arithmetic operators. Any of the six arithmetic operators that we mentioned earlier, the assignment operators make use of them. However, the difference, which is a huge point to note, the difference between assignment operator and mathematical operators is that mathematical operators, when we mentioned, they used to assign values to variables that already exist or are nearly declared. But for assignment operators, you can use it to assign values only to already existing variables. By that, this is what I mean. If I have, I cannot do this. For example, these are 
these are some examples of assignment operators. All of them would definitely have a combination of they'll, they'll, they'll oftentimes go hand in hand with the equal to sign. You have the division, division is equal to, you have multiplication or equal to. Okay, you can also have the models, the models or equal to sign, and of course the true division or equal to sign. Okay, is there anyone we're missing? Okay, multiplication and model sign. So these are all assignment operators. So like I said, these operators are used to assign values to variables that already exist, not variables that are new to play. So what that means is that if I were to do this, a plus or equals to 4, there would be an error because I'm using an, ass an assignment operator on a variable that is newly declared. No, a must already exist first before I can use an assignment variable on it. So there must have been something like this before, one way or the other, so that when you now use the assignment operator, this will assign a new value to the existing value of a. So what this statement technically means is I'm trying to do this. The new value of a should be equal to the old value of a plus 4. This is the assignment, this is the interpretation of these statements, plus or equal to. The old value, I mean the, a new value of a should be equal to the old value of a plus the value of 4. Now if you look at this now, let's see if it's gonna, if Python assigns the same of relocations to these two values of um, variable A, which I don't think would be the case because Python allocates different memories to different instances. So you can see that although they are almost the same, these are the different. So these two memory locations are different. So on creating this, Python now reassigns um, the new value to a new location that has a new um, uh, is assigned to a new ver a value of a. Alright, so that goes for every other assignment operator. They all mean one and the same thing. You could vary this as as much as you want. Maybe if there was an existing variable before b equals 10, I can make this a that that b. So in whatever way in whatever way that this is being twisted, you would have a perfect understanding of what this means. Okay, so in this case, it's going to be the, the new value of A is equal to the old value of A multiplied by the value of B. And you can get here. So these will only work when you have an already existing element or a variable, but will not work if you have a newly assigned variable. So whatever I'm going to write, each and every one of these things will give you an identical answer. So if you want to print the value of B, you're going to have a completely different answer to that one. IDB, that's a different memory location that has been given to variable B. Okay, seems to be an error. Integer division of modules by zero. So um, there's a bit of an issue with this particular code because of the module sign which usually re returns the remainder of a particular value. So that is it for the assignment operators. I've shown you all the different versions of them. There are six different examples of them and each of them will have go hand in hand with the arithmetic operator. Alright. Which other operator do we look at now? Um, going to look at the we also have the comparison operator comparison operators are operators that you use to compare two different variables um, you have this is the less than operator sign this is um, the greater than operator sign this is the Equal to a prayer sign is greater than or equal to. That's the greater than or equal to sign. This is the less than or equal to sign. 
okay less than or equal to sign then you have the not equal to sign so that's the less than or not equal to sign that's the not equal to sign mm, okay that's pretty much it so there are six different comparison operators that I used in Python and this will help you compare two variables together so uh, the way you use this is with a conditional statement if um, okay, let's say so in the event that we have these two variables you can make use of any of the two um, any of the two any of the six or comparison operators that we mentioned I can say if a is greater than b okay and print result so what this does is it'll look at the value of a and look at the value of b and try to see if a is greater than b so in this case a is 10 b is 5 so a is greater than b that is not true that is false so if you would have an else statement under here that's the line of code that would be printed so if you run this code you'll get a value of false to tell you that a is not greater than b so that is what these guys do they usually work um they they, they, they are used in line or in tandem with a conditional statement and are used to compare two variables in python so the rest of them apply the same you can use to check is a less than or equal to b no sorry this is is, is a less than b is a less than or equal to b is a greater than or equal to b there are many different ways in which you get to use these guys to test or compare two different variables we're going to look at many of them as we go about our python um programming you can also use is a not equal to b so in this case it's going to say if the value of a is not equal to b print result which actually if you run this code is going to print this result because a is not equal 10 is not equal to 12 so these are operators that are used as you can see there these are operators that are used to check the values of two variables and then compare them as their names uh, suggest comparison operators okay operators Alright, now we look at logical operators. Logical operators in Python. Okay, so in this case, you have um, you have uh, the and, the and, the or. These are the two logical operators that you have in. Okay, of course, you can also include the nuts but we're gonna see how we're gonna use each and every one of these guys in our next video so thank you for watching and if you have any question please feel free to ask and drop a comment and I'll respond to them too sweet thank you very much and see you next time